How to stay warm when you're stuck inside the hooch. How to stay warm when you're out traipsing through the wilderness. How not to become a hot weather injury in the middle of the wintertime. Coming up. Hey team, welcome back to the channel, man. As always, I'm stoked to see you. So I was hoping to get out here a little bit earlier, but you know what kind of is what it is. It's still nice and cold and it's a little balmy out which kind of brings it a little bit more home for what we're going to be talking about. And that's how to stay warm in the wintertime. You want to get out, you want to enjoy some camping, but you don't want to freeze your butt off. So we're going to go over some basic fundamental principles that you can put in your kit bag so that you can head out and enjoy the wilderness and not have to worry uh, about the freezing cold temperatures. This is all going to come down to two basic things. The first one is staying dry, and the second one is layering, right? And so right behind me, I do have a Eureka tent that's set up. This is a cot tent, a typical military issue anymore. And I have a tarp, and this is gonna do a couple things. The first thing that it's gonna do is gonna help maintain some core temperature by keeping me dry. I'm on the ground, so I'm not, I don't have to worry about the airflow circulating underneath me as if I was, uh, I was in a hammock. And it does have a good Gore-Tex cover, uh, rain fly on top, the tent does. And with the, hand, or with the tarp as well, it's going to not only give another layer of rain repellents, but it's also going to provide another layer of insulation so that I can retain heat a little bit gooder. Now, I did select a spot that had nice, good uh, moss covering. It's about three, four inches here. And I'm, I'm back into the wood line, as you can see. I'm not out in the open. And that difference, of course, is going to make probably three to five degree temperature change just from being out in the open to being right out here uh, in, in a nice little cubby spot in the woods. So again, you know, we're going to break this down as far as, you know, staying warm, staying dry and layering. I want in, to encourage you to leave some tips down below, some things from your experience that has kept you well. Maybe it's some gear related issue. Maybe it was uh, just an experience, something you put in your, in, uh, your kit bag so we can keep this conversation rolling. I got everything laid out here right now. We're gonna go through some of this stuff, uh, but I wanted to get it set out and then we'll get it set in uh, to the tent so that we can look at materials. We can talk about some different options that you're gonna have as far as being able to do these two things, staying dry and, st and, and layering your equipment. So the first thing that we want to do is pick a good isomat. Now this is just a standard government issued isomat. It's not the best. It's certainly not the worst, but it is effective. So what does it do? Now it does a couple things, right? right? It, it, helps, it helps, helps us sleep a little bit gooder by making it a little bit more comfy uh, of a surface. But as I mentioned earlier, I am on a good thick covering of moss. So I'm not overly concerned about putting my back on this ground. Whereas if I was on some rocks or something like that. But what it is gonna do is it's going to help layer and provide some insulation between myself and the, and, and the ground. This ground is gonna do nothing but try to suck the warmth out of your body. And that's what we need to understand, right? Is our bodies are constantly fighting to maintain a core body temperature. Whether it's trying to cool ourselves down or warm ourselves up. Unless you are in a perfect uh, isolated uh, area your body's constantly fighting. Man, if it's 80 degrees out, your body's fighting to maintain its core body temp. If it's 105 degrees out, your body's maintaining, is fighting to maintain that core body temp. So providing yourself some insulation between you and the cold ground is gonna help keep you warm. Let's get this set in. All right, so next up is gonna be our bivy sack. And this option, actually what I'm gonna show you is gonna be two thirds of the entire modular sleeping system uh, that we use in the military. Uh, but whether you know, you, you, you find this stuff commercial off the shelf, whether you go to a surplus store, whether you buy it on Amazon, this bivy uh, sack, bivy sucker, what the hell is a bivy sucker? This bivy sack is a great piece of gear. All it is is Gore-Tex, right? And of course it has a, the zippered, entrance and exit. And of course, this is gonna keep you dry, right? And that's one of the primary things about this is it will keep you dry, but it's not going to insulate you. So it can be a sauna, but not on its own. In order to make that good sauna, we need some, some insulation inside. You can imagine just putting on a Gore-Tex top that had you know, no lining on it in the middle of the wintertime. It's not gonna keep you warm. You need something in there 
to help maintain that core temp. And so the first piece of gear that we're gonna use is just gonna be our uh, fart sack. Now the entire, I think that this one is rated uh, to like negative 10. If you use both, it's rated like negative 50 inside this. Like it's absolutely retarded how warm you can stay in a proper setup. So this right here is probably gonna be enough so I'm gonna get this thing set up. But to be honest with you, there's one more piece of gear that I wanna share with you, and that's the Wooby. Now, if I put this Wooby inside my sleeping bag, man, I promise you, I won't be able to sleep in like negative 452 degrees because Wooby's are that stinking awesome. If you have a Wooby, if you have a good Wooby story, leave a comment down below, man. These things are absolutely life stinking changing. That's how. That's how awesome these things are. And you just, oh, so awesome. <laughs> but in all seriousness, lining inside of your sleeping bag with a Wooby or with you know, a, a summer sleeping bag is going to be life changing as you're sleeping at night. And so that's gonna about do it, but there is something else I wanna tell you. You know, as you're getting inside your hooch, one of the things that you need to consider is to take all of the clothes that you're gonna be wearing for the next day and stuff them inside your sleeping bag. There's nothing worse than putting on a pair of ice cold socksicles or underwear schools, right? There's absolutely nothing much worse than that. So do your body, do your privates a favor and warm that stuff up over the night. Now the other thing I need to tell you is don't get into your sleeping bag with all of your clothes on. You're, you're, not gonna, you're not gonna be doing the sleeping system justice, which is designed to reflect and retain your body temperature. So you need a little bit more space between you and it. So take off your pants and put them down inside your sleeping bag. Take off your sweater, take off your, whatever it is that you're gonna wear, put it inside your sleep system. But sleeping in here a little bit closer to your uh, birthday suit, is gonna help make sure that you sleep a little bit warmer. It may be chilly when you, when you first get in there, but I promise you, you're gonna have your own little sauna. Right, so that's just gonna about gonna cover everything in order to stay warm when we're inside the hooch and we're trying to, to catch some Z's so that we can enjoy tomorrow. Now, it is about you know, 33, 34 degrees right now. It's a little, it's a little chilly. And if you want to be able to make your way out through this brush and to stay warm, we need to apply the same two principles. The first one, again, is to stay dry. And the second one is to layer. Now, there's all sorts of ways and means and methods, right, that we can use to stay dry, whether you're using something that's synthetic or whether we're using something that's man-made. And by the way, I, I, I'm not opposed to either one. I love both. So just because I like being out in the woods and I like bushcrafting doesn't mean that I don't like uh, synthetic or man-made materials. Hello, can you see the tarp behind me? I mean, come on now. But I do, like I do like natural materials as well. Like, there's nothing much better than this Pendleton sweater. You feel what I'm saying? So it's okay to use both. What, I'm, what I will tell you is don't think that you can buy something that, that's high quality for, on the cheap unless you get to a great consignment store that you can buy a piece of quality used gear, that's the only way that you're gonna do it on the cheap. And I, there's nothing wrong with that. Check out your Goodwill stores, check out your local consignment stores, check out eBay, check out on, some online, and see if you can find yourself a good deal. You don't have to buy brand new, brand name equipment in order to enjoy the outdoors. But what I will caution you is buy the best of what you can right now, and then it'll do you gooder. Does that make sense, friends? Like, if you can hold off an extra week or two or paycheck or two to save up an extra 10, 15, 20, 30 dollars, whatever the case is for what you're looking at, then do that. Now, there's all kinds of ways to stay dry when we're out here and we're moving around. Whether we're using a poncho, whether we have a slicker on, whether we have, you know, something, some oil cloth. But what we want to do is make sure that we're staying dry and then that we're layering. Now, to, going down to our feet, our extremities are the, gonna be the, where we're gonna feel the cold the most, whether it's our, ha our hands, whether it's our feet, whether it's our ears. 
Now, it is a myth to tell you that you lose 90% of your body heat through your head. All right? We lose our surface, uh, we lose our body temperature based off the square inch of our body. Now, as it turns out, most people don't have anything that we're uh, retaining body heat up here. So that is not an untrue statement that we lose more heat through our head. But if just a bare naked body, man, you're going to lose, it's, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be the same throughout all your body. But what I want you to do is understand that you need to layer and make sure that you take care of your extremities, right? Mittens will work and keep your hands warmer than gloves because it's going to use all of the heat from all of your fingers inside that little pouch. For your feet, layer your socks, right? Put on a nice pair of dress socks and then put on a nice pair of wool socks. That may mean that you need a pair of boots for the wintertime and a pair of boots for the summertime. Because once you start putting on all your socks and your layering, then it's, your boots may not fit properly. And you need to make sure that you have a pair of properly fitting boots. Don't skip out on, on your footwear, gents. Understand and know that the type of material that your pants are made out of is gonna directly impact your state of mind. If you're running around in cold, wet climate, wearing cotton, that's probably not gonna do you much good at all. So consider what sort of, of, of trousers that you have on, the gaiters maybe that you wanna wear, the overboots that you wanna wear, things of this nature, in order to make sure that you keep your feet dry. I cannot stress that enough. Keep your feet dry. Gonna work through with the rest of our body as well. Whether we have on you know, some, some moisture wicking undershirts, and then uh, some longer, thicker uh, sweatshirts or sweaters, things of this nature, and then finally some outerwear with, with our coats. But layering and being able to take off and to put back on as we need to is gonna help make sure that you maintain a core temp. And tip number three, how to not become a hot weather injury in the middle of the winter time. Now you may think, Stoke man, there's no stinking way that you can become a hot weather injury or succumb to one in the middle of the winter time, and I'm telling you that you couldn't be further away from the truth. So I wanna tell you a short story. Right, so we're out in the middle of Virginia. It's 1990 something. And we get a phone call, or a phone call, we get a, a call over the radio that, uh, that the temp's gonna drop from range control. And sure enough, it dropped. In fact, all of our water jugs froze solid completely. I mean, everything was an iceberg. Now, that's not going to stop us from training. So we get up and we, and we dust off our, uh, our hooches and tear apart our shelter has, and we pack up and we get ready to step out. Now, I tell everybody, listen to me, gents. There's one thing that I need you to do, and it's don't wear your cold weather gear. The only thing I want you to wear is some gloves and maybe a beanie. And all my team chiefs said, hey, roger that. So we step out. And about a mile down the road, had a kid who fell out like a champ. Now this dude fell out like, 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 like it was nothing, nobody's business. You know, because I yell at people for, for taking a knee. Like if you're gonna fall out, man, you need to, boom, fall the hell out. And he did just that. So we pushed the platoon forward a little bit. And I go and I straddle him and I'm like, hey, are you awake in there? and you take this opportunity when you can. So I, I, I smack him around a little bit, his eyes rolling in the back of his head. Man, this dude's out like a light. So we call Doc to come back. And Doc looks down at him, and we rip open his uh, blouse and this plume of steam just poof, bellows right out. Doc looks up at me and he says, hey, I think we need to get this dude's core temp. I'm like, hey, Doc, man, that's too easy. So I yell out, give me a two man detail. So these two Lance Coolies come running up. I'm like, hey, help Doc out. So they, they go to help him out and they strip down his trousers. He had on underneath his trousers and underneath his blouse. He had on his, his sweatpants, his sweatshirt, his woolly pulley, his long johns. And this dude had everything on. He was absolutely not listening. He was a hot sauna deep inside. But there's, there's more to the story. There's way more to the story. They strip down his, his drawers and what do they find? They find that this young Marine was not anything else other than a Wookiee. His entire body, his entire body had more hair on it than I do on the top of my head. And so 
Lance Cooley 1 and Lance Cooley 2 is like, oh my God, what the hell is this? And Doc's looking up at me like, hey, Stoke, I don't know where to stick this thermometer. I can't see the hole. I'm like, hey, it's too easy. You get the left cheek, you get the right cheek, and part that thing like the Red Seas. And so they do just that, and they plop him in, and the young man did not budge at all. And so that's how I knew that he was really out like a light. So he did, right? His, his core temp was, was like 102 degrees or something like that. It was absolutely burning up. So we strip him down a little bit and, and, and spread out his gear and give, some, give his battle buddy his weapon. And we continue to move on. But the other thing I had to be cautious of is something that Doc and I was talking about was we didn't want him to, to inadvertently become a cold weather injury at the same time. Because he was completely sweating through, his clothes were, were going to drastically drop his core temp. Now getting him back to his, his normal body temperature was fine, but that's not where it would have stopped. It would have kept plunging him down into the darkness of being cold. And so we had to put on dry clothes on his entire body. Finally we got him to, uh, so, he, so he could at least help us out a little bit with that. But we had to be cognizant of this. So I need you to do the same thing. And that's why it's important to layer and to be able to take your layers off and on as you need to. Because if you're moving around out here, friends, listen to me. You don't need a lot of layering on your legs or your upper body because you're, you're out moving, right? Especially with your legs. You're out walking and traipsing about. Your, your temperature is going to naturally elevate. So if you do have something on, like a nice jacket or sweater or... or scarf or something like that that's great as long as you can have the ability to take it off and then put things back on you know if you happen to stop to take a little a little snacky snack break everybody likes a little pogey break pogey bait break <laughs> say that five times fast pogey bait break pogey bait break pogey bait break pogey bait break hey i hope you enjoyed the content of this video if you did Make sure you, you, you consider sharing it with somebody that you may feel needs to hear the same information and get brought into the conversation so that we can do just that. We can, we can learn from each other and continue to master our craft and develop our tactical virtue. Man, I hope you all are doing well. You stay out there and you stay stoked.